We've got both AMD and Intel gearing up to release new desktop processors later this year. While there's immense hype surrounding Zen 4 and Raptor Lake, I see buyers leaning towards Team Blue for one major reason. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. We're going to have a lot of cool new hardware released to look forward to this fall. Amongst all that new hardware, we've got new CPUs to look forward to. This time, both AMD and Intel, if all goes according to plan, will be releasing new generation CPUs for the desktop DIY market. AMD have their Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 series coming on an all new AM5 platform, along with new 600 series motherboards. And there's quite a bit of hype surrounding Zen 4 since AMD haven't really launched a new platform since 2017. They've released new motherboards, but they've all used that same AM4 socket, and recently they have expanded support so that 5 year old motherboards could run a Zen 3 or Zen 3D CPU, which is great. Intel on the other hand have continued to do their usual 2 year cycle, where they will release a socket, and that socket will be good for 2 generations until they move on to the next, and consumers have to then upgrade their motherboards. I honestly thought they would have figured out a way to make their platforms have much better longevity and compatibility going forward considering what AMD did, but I suppose they're just not too worried about that. Anyways, that's not the focus for this video. What I wanted to talk about was why Intel's next-gen Raptor Lake CPUs seem quite a bit more appealing than AMD's next-gen Zen 4 CPUs. The main reason comes down to DDR4 support. I went over this briefly in one of my previous videos, so I wanted to make this video as an extension to that, and we've recently gotten some leaks that basically confirm how Intel could end up having the advantage with this upcoming generation. In that previous video, I talked about how Video Cards posted a leak last month containing a list of motherboards from ASRock. The 700 series motherboards are planned to be released alongside Intel's 13th gen CPUs, and amongst them we can see motherboards having D4 at the end, which means they will be a DDR4 variant. Now just recently there was a picture posted on the Baidu forums that HXL on Twitter shared, and we can see this being some sort of presentation from Intel. This picture showcases the Raptor Lake S platform, the features it has to offer, and the hardware it supports. We can see on the top right hand side for the memory that Raptor Lake will support DDR5 and underneath it we can see that it says continue DDR4 up to 3200MHz, which is just the official support. You can obviously go much higher than that via overclocking. This right here is a pretty big deal because now it's basically official that we will see Intel's partners release variants of the 700 series motherboards which will be DDR4 compatible. This includes partners such as ASRock, ASUS, MSI, and Gigabyte. The reason why this is so crucial, and I talked about this a couple times before, is because DDR5 is just ridiculously expensive right now. I mean, we're talking about double, if not triple the price for a kit with mediocre latency at best. Looking at some of these kits on Newegg, a 16GB DDR5 kit that runs at 5600 mega transfers, CL36 is a whopping $277. Meanwhile, you can go over on Amazon and pick up this Patriot Viper Steel 16GB DDR4 kit that runs at 4000 mega transfers with a cast latency rating of 19. It is Samsung B-Dye, so it's very tunable, and you might be able to get much better than that. So that's about 12.86 nanoseconds versus 9.5 nanoseconds respectively. Sure, DDR5 provides considerably more bandwidth. However, multiple tech sites and tech reviewers have shown that for many applications, especially games right now, they're just not benefiting from the higher bandwidth of DDR5 and it's lower latency that is more advantageous. This can change in the future with how software is optimized, but you should never really be buying hardware based on scenarios that may or may not happen in the future. The point is, is that as of now, DDR5 is just not providing you any benefit for the extra premiums, so you're much better off saving your money, getting a quality DDR4 kit, and putting that money towards a CPU or GPU, and that will have a greater impact to your overall performance. The problem is that, if we go by what AMD has put out officially in regards to Zen Force features and hardware support, gamers will have no option but to buy expensive DDR5 kits if they want Zen 4. There will be no AM5 DDR4 motherboards. Zen 4 isn't due to come out sometime in September, so there's still about 2 months, but the prices for DDR5 kits will definitely not come down drastically by the time those CPUs and motherboards hit the market. I don't expect DDR5 kits to become as cheap as DDR4 kits anytime soon, 
Probably not for at least another two years or so. The technology is still quite new and we just have to wait for manufacturing processes to become mature. The other thing is that for those that do end up buying Zen 4, they'll be pairing those CPUs with kits that have okay-ish or just plain awful latency. And we've seen many benchmarks showcasing how Ryzen just loves low latency memory. And if Zen 4 continues that tradition, then what's going to happen is that people will run a Ryzen system with RAM that has poor timings, and they're going to be leaving performance on the table for that CPU. And I can foresee a lot of Zen 4 owners running into that problem or not realizing that they're gimping their CPU's performance. So with Intel making it official that Raptor Lake will support DDR4, this will be a huge advantage for them when it comes to performance per dollar and just the overall value appeal over what AMD has. I'm sure AMD is aware of this though, this would be a huge area to overlook. Which is why I think we might end up getting an alternative from AMD to help appease those customers that just want some sort of next gen boost, but don't particularly want to upgrade uh, for a new platform because of the high expensive DDR5 cost. Whether it's an upgrade for AM4 or whether we'll see AM5 DDR4 compatible motherboards, I'm not sure. Either way, AMD needs to respond to this. Known hardware leaker Greymon55 on Twitter has stated recently it's been rumored in the last few days that there will be several new products for Zen 3D. It's true, and there will be further information next month. Following up on that and saying there will also be new low-end AM4 products in the future. This means that we'll probably end up seeing a 5600X 3D, a 5500X 3D, 5300X 3D, who knows? There could even be a 5900X 3D. I know there are many people who would jump at a chance for a 12-core CPU with 3D vCache. They also did respond to a user who asked if AMD could release Zen 4 with the existing 12 nanometer IO die to AM4. They responded saying that while Zen 4 AM4 exists, it's only used for internal testing. I don't think we'll see an AM4 Zen 4 CPU. I mean, I'd love to, but I think it would easily cannibalize a lot of sales for AM5 for reasons I mentioned earlier, and obviously AMD don't want that. However, I can definitely see AMD releasing more Zen 3D CPUs for lower end segments. As much as I would love a 5900X 3D, I think it would take a lot of sales away from Zen 4's top SKUs. So I think what will happen is that they'll use those new 3D CPUs to target those that want a performance boost, but don't necessarily want to jump to AM5 and tell them, hey, if you want to save some money, go for these new Zen 3D CPUs. For everyone else, they can go for Zen 4. But this way, they can still have some options for users and prevent people from jumping ship to Intel. Because at the end of the day, all you need is just a BIOS update and you're good to go. But this is going to be a pretty interesting scenario to watch, where Intel is looking like the better bang for the buck platform. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. How do you think AMD should respond? Should they release DDR4 compatible AM5 motherboards? Should they release Zen 4 AM4 models? Or should they just release some lower end Zen 3D models? I think AMD has some really important decisions to make here because Intel played their cards right this time. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.